Hi, welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Ko Shakuna and today I am out and about and I thought I could share with you a little bit of the process when I pick a place to draw on location, how I pick that place, if I think about composition, um, if I know from beforehand how I'm actually going to capture the place? The answer is no. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to take you through the process. I'm not going to like film everything because I just have my phone, um, but I will share the process uh, in little steps and bits and pieces and hopefully you get something out of it. Okay, I have everything, my sketchbook, my coffee in a thermos and my tools. This is the view that I'm looking at and actually I have been looking for something that would be interesting but also for a space where I could sit because I didn't bring a stool or anything. I just want to sit on a bench and the weather is lovely so a little bit of sunshine on the bench would also be nice and this is actually a great place to sit where the sun is not directly in my eyes and I have a nice view that I can draw. The bridge will be my main focal point but there's a lot going on around it. There's the trees and the buildings in the background and I love that there's an overhanging tree here in the foreground. I will definitely use that in my drawing and I think I'll just start with drawing part of the bridge and from there on I will find my way. I don't know how much of the view on the left I will include. I don't know how much on the right. I do know that I don't like those containers that are on the right hand side on the other side of the water so I don't care for those I don't want to draw those so that's one thing I know not much planning going on here so I think I'm ready to draw before I start overthinking I'm using this sailor with a food and nib in a 40 degree angle it's a pink edition it might be a special edition it was gifted to me and what a wonderful present isn't it so you can find these sailor 40 degree angle food nibs they are dark blue and then there's the 55 degree angle which are green and my pen is not flowing right away that's because I was fiddling around a little bit before filming but I am starting with that dark middle of the bridge it's just a starting point it doesn't mean it is my absolute focus of this drawing but you have to start somewhere right and then I draw the next thing that I see next to it and I start adding the darks on the photo you cannot really see all the shades it's just dark but when you're out and about and you're really looking at what you see you will see that a shadow is not just a shadow and a dark part is not just a dark part and it's really fun to hatch to indicate the degree of darkness I'm still sort of around that starting point sort of spiraling around it filling the space looking at what I see and slowly starting to draw all these elements and when I draw trees I definitely am not drawing all the leaves and bits and pieces look how scribbly this is I do look at the darks because that will give you a lot of depth and the idea that there's something layering going on so that really helps and it works a little bit quicker too and I'm starting to draw more shading in because I see a lot of contrast when I squint my eyes I can see all those darker shades because of the bright sunlight and this is where I'm at now if I would stop now I would be quite happy with this drawing actually but I keep on going because I'm not done yet I'm having so much fun and what happens when you draw you forget everything so I forgot to take a few pictures of the steps before this one I struggled a little bit drawing this guy but I did want to draw someone in this drawing because there were a lot of people just walking and walking their dog people on bicycles so at least one person had to be included in his drawing before I filled everything in and before it would be too hard to pick a place where they could fit and I think now I'm actually ready for some color 
So I'm grabbing my watercolor set and my water brush, which is super handy on location because you don't need to use brushes and extra water bottles and stuff like that. And now I am mixing a brown with the three browns in my palette, which is burnt umber, Italian burnt sienna and Van Dyke brown. And then I also add a little bit of red, a touch of red. And with that brown, I am going to start coloring the bridge because that bridge was the starting point and it only makes sense. I didn't even think about it that much. It just makes sense to start with that coloring. I'm using that same brown and you'll see me do that more often. Once I have a color brown, it's actually a starting point for many other colors that are brownish. So the pathway here is kind of reddish brownish. And so all I need to do is add a little bit of red to the brown that was already existing. And I think that's smart anyway to do but when you're on location it is kind of handy to keep on going with color that you've already mixed so here i'm adding orange to the brown mix and now i have a good brickish kind of color that i can use for the buildings in the background and i'm not being too accurate but i'm trying to show that there's not that many leaves on the trees anymore so i paint behind the trees as well and i look around where else i can use this color mix again more brown to this brown mix because I want darker bits. I cleaned my brush before going in so I could make that fade to a little bit of a lighter brown towards us. I added some green for the grass. With some indigo and Van Dyke brown, I'm now adding more dark. It has dried, so I can put it on top. Might be a little bit damp, but you know, I don't have that much patience. And now I'm just really having some fun adding a little bit of texture to the water. And this is kind of like making patterns and it's kind of like drawing, but different. And with that indigo and Van Dyke brown, I have a nice gray that I actually can use on a lot of places in this drawing. I want less emphasis on this guy here, so he gets a gray layer as well. So it tones things down, it dials it back a little bit. Mix a nice yellowish green because the leaves right now are so beautiful on the trees. I really want to add that to my drawing. So I'm just having fun adding texture. I'm not going to color the whole thing because then it would feel like a coloring page. So I'm just doing dabs of color. And here I am using that gray again and mixing it with the green that I had mixed. So I have another nice darker green to add to this tree and when you do this when you use the colors that you have already mixed you are creating an overall feeling in your drawing 
of a matching palette because you are using the same colors even when you mix them again they feel like family okay now a little bit of bright color after all that grayish stuff going on i like that it brightens the whole thing up and it indicates that there's some bright sunlight it feels warm again i'm not coloring the whole thing in just indicating with some texture basically I keep going back and it's these small bits like oh there at the edge it feels too white I'll just add three dots of yellow and then actually that does the whole trick let's add some more contrast now in the background again because the shading the shadows are quite dark because of the bright light And while I am adding more contrast to the grass, I realize that it actually feels a little bit flat. So I'm adding another green, a little bit of a lighter green on top of that first layer of green. I am adding the beautiful orangey color of the leaves that are on the ground and in the trees. That also brings contrast brightness liveliness and with that i'm almost done the only thing is that we have a bright blue sky today and i kept mine white so i am going to finish with the sky and i'm not going to make a wash or anything that's too complicated because i already filled in the whole foreground so i am filling in the sky in a playful way and i think actually this way it's also very lively. And look at that, I made a little friend. Making this drawing took me about an hour. I'm not entirely sure because I didn't time it and I forget about time when I draw, but it was probably about an hour, maybe a little bit longer. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along with my process. I certainly enjoyed being here, being in the moment and listening to everything and trying to capture the whole vibe and trying to capture everything. And your assignment for this week is to go someplace. It can be outside, but if it's too cold, try and find coffee shop maybe, or even just draw from your car or something like that. Be creative finding your location and as you do so try to capture the vibe try to really be in the moment it doesn't have to be a whole view it can also be your feet in the grass or your cup of coffee on the table in the coffee shop just be creative about that too but try and find to see textures see how you can use textures to capture certain parts of what you're seeing um, colors to layer your colors see if you can um, tie things together with color and uh, play with your palette play let's play this week okay I hope you will have fun I hope this video helped and inspired and if you like my videos then please subscribe to this channel you can also uh, support me on Patreon so I can, can keep making these videos for free on YouTube every week. The link to that is below uh, this video. And uh, also, don't forget to buy my book, Life is Better When You Draw It. That's the title of my book, but you also know that it's true. The book is also really great as a gift. So with the holidays coming up, well, here's your tip. Links are all below this video in the description. I will see you next week. Bye.